Hi, and welcome to the SCM32 lab part two overview. In this part, we're going to discuss part two, which covers finite state machine software design patterns. For this lab, we're given, we're provided an example of a stoplight. There's two light, there's two roads corresponding with a north-south and an east-west that allow traffic to pass one way or the other. From here, what you'll see is we provide you with a finite state machine diagram where initially we'll start off with one of these states and at a given time we'll sit at the state for either about 10 seconds if we start here and after that we'll transition to the next state. With each transition state being transition east-west we'll have the yellow light configured for the east-west road and then all stop we'll have both lights set to red after five seconds we'll sit there for five more. From here we'll go to north-south pass east-west stop so at this point East-West road is going to turn red and North-South turns green. We're going to wait for 10 seconds. We go to transition. So now the North-South road turns yellow. Sit for five seconds. Transition. Both lights are red again. And again, we go down. We're going to have, keep North-South road red and East-West turns green. And we continue this loop continuously over and over and over. So in this case, the finite state machine allows us to control each state, and the state being what the lights are configured to. And in this case, we're using a more state machine. And down here, you can see how we have our finite state table. So this allows us to easily read and understand what's going on in each state. And by following this, it actually makes it easier for us to design our code. So what we can see is based off of our current state, we have an input, and that input in this case is some time. If the time is less than 10 seconds, then our next state will be itself. If the time is equal to 10 seconds, we go to another state. Now, for here, we have a more output because the output is only based off the current state. And this determines what the values of LEDs are. And you can see here we have NS uh, representing north-south road and EW representing east-west. And we also have each of the colors of the um, stoplight, green, yellow, red, on each of them and what their values are. So this is great because this method will allow us to kind of read what's going on with the code. All right, so make sure when we set up the next part, we discuss that you need to set up six LEDs and at least three different colors. If you don't have red, green, blue, that's perfectly fine. Ideally, you'll have them. If you need to double up, that's great, but try to make sure you can make sense of what LEDs represent what colors. We'll go through after that, you're gonna configure the pins. Ideally, you wanna to try to leverage the same values. Now, if you're using the L4 board, don't worry. Um, the pinout or diagram should, for the most part, match. You can line up though the PA0, P1, P2. It just won't be in the exact positions as it matches here. Go ahead and wire up. Remember to use roughly 330 ohm. If you don't have 330 ohm resistors, that's fine. Try to use some resistors in series and parallel to get roughly close as much as you need. Next, we're gonna discuss some of the code. So for here, we have a couple of different things. One is we have what's called an enum or an enumeration. This is a custom type of data type that we've set up. And this makes it easier to understand what the different states in our finite state machine are. In this case, we're gonna name this enum as the data type of E system state. E are the leading E's of convention of saying the data type is an enum and system state is the name that we chose. And what we can see here is each of the values that can be set are a state in our finite state machine. Enums are great ways of coding and simply as limiting the boundaries of what we need or if we need a custom data type. And what I mean by a custom data type, if you recall from your review or from your C programming or programming class, is data types can represent different things. A character can be a C, B, A, D, the letter of itself. An integer can be um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A float or a double is a decimal, so a value, so like 1.5, 1.25, depending on the level of precision you need. And in this case, we're creating a custom one where the only valid variables for e-system state data types are these ones right here. And again, it's a great way to make code more understandable as we look and read through it. Now next, what you'll notice is I've created different state handlers. So these functions, their purposes for each of the state, there should be one for each state 
is to simply drive what the output should be, as we saw in the table above, as well as we're going to just add a delay or that kind of set, and then we're going to return what the next state should be after here. And you'll see again, there's each one for each of the states. All right. Now, the most important part of the code. Now, first, we have this value here. This is going to declare our e next state variable, which is a data type e system state. And we're going to set the initial state. So this is what happens when we reset our code is whatever state we want to set it to, this is where it's going to begin execution, right? Because as we go down and we execute, if e next state is set to transition and s state, we're going to start our code. We go down to the switch case. We go, oh, I need to go transition. Boom. This is the first line executes after the switch case. So if you want to make this a different value, like an all stop state, you can simply copy this value and replace this transition instead. So we want to make sure we declare and initialize our e system state data type, or in our case, our variable will be e next state inside our, outside of our infinite loop. Now, from here, inside our infinite loop, we'll have a switch case statement. This is the heart of our finite state machine. At any point, we should never write code that breaks this or jumps out of this flow. And when I say this, and you'll see in later parts, you should never wrap an if statement around this. This should never be nested. If we were to put if statements, they should only be within the each of those individual cases, like here. Now, each of the states need to be represented. It is also important that we always include a default case as sometimes if our code gets to a bad state or something happens, we want some known state to go. And in this case, I want to make sure that I have an all stop state. So that way all the red lights turn red if something happens and breaks and we don't allow cars to pass and people don't get hurt. Now, what you'll notice is inside this code, we'll hit the switch case. We're going to check the variable, what it is. In this case, if we just started our program, it should be transition NS state. We're now going to call this function, right? Transition or south handler. And this function, we're going to go ahead and go back right here, and it's going to execute. So it's going to set up our lights. It's going to delay for five seconds, and then it's going to return an E system state value of all stop east west state. And so we can see here that this E next state uh, is now set to all stop east west state, right? So it executes, it sets this new variable value and it's gonna break. So it's break just means it's gonna jump. It's gonna now go back and go from the beginning. So E next state, remember its new value is all stop east west. So it hits this line right here and then it jumps down and executes this handle or state handle. So again, the reason why we use finite state machines is it allows us to control when certain execution happens when. And while it seems complex for the finite state for what we're using now, it makes adding additional features much easier and it helps it make it more readable. Because as we have it now, we have a simple timed life, right? So next for your practical exercise and what you'll need to show is we need to modify the finite state machine such that that will make the north south road traffic light green only when a certain switch is pressed. So we're going to add a push button to our circuit. So this means that the east west road is going to stay green. And until a car arrives, then the north south road will then transition to green and then go back to north south. Uh, I'm sorry, go back to east west. Uh, east west should transition to red and then allow north-south road to pass and then transition back. So east-west turns green and north-south is red. So to go back over, let me, sorry, let me go up. What's going to happen is we're going to be stuck at this state only if a button is pressed. So we'll add a push button to our circuit and this state is going to check a button and say, okay, is the button pressed? If no, go back to its current state. Stay where you're at. If the button is pressed, now let's go ahead and continue through our finite state machine. So we're gonna go ahead and jump down here and then we'll just let everything else progress naturally. And then we'll come back and then stay here until the button is pressed again. So the only state that cares about the input being a button 
where the button, the state of the button is this state, north south, north, south, stop, east, west, pass. So if we go to our table, what that means is north, south, stop, east, west, pass. Instead of it having a timer delay, we're going to use a push button, right? And that means in our code down here, there's different ways we can approach it, but for the most part, within the north south stop case, so down here, we might need to add an if statement, or within the east west pass handler, we'll need to add an if statement that checks the state of the push button. And if the button is pressed, then we need to set the east west state to whatever the, the next state should be corresponding to the table, or we go back to this state over and over again. So again, I want to emphasize a very common mistake is people break this and add if else statements outside of this switch case statement. That is incorrect. And that will actually break your switch case statement and could cause unexpected code or corner cases. So what you want to do is add an if statement within this case itself, either within the function east west pass and or or within this in between this line right here and where we set the e next day. So that's it for lab. Uh, the STM32 lab part two overview. If you have any questions, please ask your lab instructor and uh, have a wonderful day.